genetically more or modified organisms being produced locally undergo four critical stages that take between 10 and 15 years before they are fully processed for both domestic and commercial usage. But what does it take to process GMOs? Well, our very own Seth Olale visited one of the only four biosafety accredited laboratories where dedicated genetic engineering students were busy carrying out the entire GMO processes under the watchful eye of the facility's director and researcher, Professor Richard Odwar. Take a listen. University's Level 2 Biosafety Laboratory that was unveiled in 2005 is the pioneer plant for processing of GMOs in Kenya. Inside this restricted facility, we meet the director of research, Professor Richard Odor, leading genetic engineering masters and PhD students in producing various varieties of GMOs, ranging from cassava to sorghum and millet. Then when you get to the lab, you must also be able to identify the crop that you want to improve. And these improvements only come in if there is a challenge. Once that bit is settled, the genetic modification process starts at the molecular stage. Genetic embryogenesis, depending on what method you are using. In this scenario, scientists are modifying this sample of cassava in order to increase its shelf life. Next, the cassava sample is taken to the tissue culture stage where it undergoes the transformation. Inside some of those fluids that you see there, we will have um, uh, a gene construct that has already been mixed with, uh, with the bacteria that has got the, the expression cassette. And then what it will be done, this tissue is now dropped into that liquid part of things so that the bacteria can start throwing the genes in. The modified cassava organism is then transferred to the glass house where temperature and humidity intake is also regulated as the crop is gradually introduced to the natural environment for the very first time. From this, I can induce this to form. The, after the plant, I, I, I has formed the roots and I can see the, the roots are very strong. I take the plant from here to hardening now. Afterward, only the modified samples that have undergone the desired outcome are finally taken to the confined field for additional trials. We also look at the interactions between the parasites as well as the host plants into what is it that is in this cowpea that is not in this other cowpea. And we were able to transfer that using the genome editing probably, mm -hmm. uh, or even the normal way, the conventional uh, breeding way, we're able to transfer that trait into the susceptible lines. Previous and current scientists from the 18-year-old lab have successfully modified at least five GMOs, ranging from various needs, including drought resistance purposes. One of our colleagues here, called Dr. Matthew Piero, who his PhD was on that, and he's the chair of this very, very department. So products that are for the, the, the reduced, we call them cyanogenic cassava, is already existing here. Another one that is existing here is maize that is tolerant to drought. It could even take between 10 to 15 years to actualize the final GMO product. And that is why there is strict adherence to the regulatory processes in this particular lab. Seth Olale, Citizen TV, Kenata University, Campbell County.